as expected there's not much happening here today so on my lunch break you're going to get make you suffer with more verbal diarrhea from me uh main reason i make this video i want to clarify something i said i mentioned in the comment the pinned comment in the last video uh w uh cd6 uh, someone had, me had mentioned the idea of acadia being unattainable i didn't mean i believe in that i mean that's the philosophical kind of concept behind arcadia is that this this arcadian idealism is unattainable i i, I don't believe that I, that's what's been that's been put there it is the it, yes it's the embodiment of western civilization european civilization but also like it, you know hindu and vedic civilization and even things like persian that that kind of thing uh, outside the abraham i'm back the uh that was interesting a car drove by and knocked me offline the uh the grail romances and the middle ages and then the you know the teutonic romances yeah that that's that's how it is that's you know once 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 the dangers of nature and the natural and spiritual world have been defeated or tamed then Arcadia, you know, the Elysium fields are, are attainable on earth. So I didn't mean that Arcadia can't be attained. I just wanted to clarify, but it's a good point that man or woman brought up. Yes, the Arcadia, it's, I'm just talking about the philosophical, even poetic notion of Arcadia as being just out of a reach, not, not attainable. So I was thinking about that, you know, and I was kind of bored and I got thinking about other thing, other stuff. And, and then I was mentioning in that video about the concept of crossroads. Well, you know, the Rona years were a crossroads for me. And for many of us, like I, lots of you came listening to me, joined me during those years uh, from 2020 to now. And let me tell you my story. I never had an issue with needlecraft, with, you know, treatments. Anytime. I never had an issue with any of that stuff. It never, never bothered me. I assume that... I'll keep the car door open. I keep getting knocked off. Well, I can totally believe that there was, you know, problems by administering that many inoculations to babies. Like, I think it's up to 50 now in the West. They give babies before they're two. Leading to these, like, homiculum blobs that you get now in schools all over the West. Do you remember that 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 ad that cartoon that the Irish Teachers Union made for non for transgender children, infants, and the little kids in the Irish school were all like this. Well, that's what's in loads of schools these days. Plus, there's lots been made evil as well by this stuff. I never had I never had a problem with the concept of the needle crafts in general. Not not the needle craft, but I I, I assume yeah. Well, they, there does seem to be some evidence that they did work. But then I always go, but you know, they also happened at the same time. There was improved sanitation and food hygiene going on at the same time. So is it really the needle crafts? The I keep going off. I move I, this a little bit. Or was it really, more, you know, more a case of engineering, you know, solving the, the problems with so public hygiene and health issues rather than pharmaceutical companies with needles and inoculations? Well, now, following the needle craft, I don't trust any of them. I don't trust any single one of them. I'll never have any kind of one of them ever put in me ever again. I had the BCG when I was a baby, whatever you call it. And I've never had any, I never went, I went into Asia and stuff, I never got them or anything like that. But I just didn't feel like I needed them. But now I'm totally against them. I'm totally against them because I now see them since the needle craft. I now see them in a more philosophical way than I, or spiritual way actually, than I did in a sort of a biopharmaceutical way. Look, how can, how can I phrase this in a way that doesn't make me sound like a fucking lunatic? It's like, it's like I'm being attacked today. I don't know if it's a result of something that happened about five and a half thousand years ago in the steppes Aryan region of the known today of Russia, where a group called the Indo-Europeans developed the ability to digest lactate acid. As a result, they could then drink cow's milk, they could eat cheese and butter, and this allowed them to be healthier and stronger 
and also to maintain herds of cattle without actually having to kill them for milk. And the rest is history. One side of the Indo-Europeans moved into Europe as far the west of Ireland and the other side went into South Asia and became the Vedic cultures as far south as Sri Lanka or serendipity as it was known later on as it used to be known in the time of Alexander the Great and that's one of the most common one of the most significant commonalities the Indo-European share as this collective tribe stretching from Sri Lanka through Persia and uh, the steppes across the Danube up the Rhine and across the, the British and Irish Isles is bull veneration or cow veneration or bovine veneration. This is very central to Indo-European paganism. You know the, the sacred cow in the Vedic world and that was because of the ability to digest lactic acid and to give our ancestors a winning edge or give them an, an edge over the others is what they recognized and they, they religiousized their deified it and you got the same concept of a sacred cow. In Ireland you have the symbol of the the black bull, sorry, the black and red, the, the, the bull, you know, the cattle, the cattle of Cooley. Uh, the sacred, you know, the two kingdoms in Ireland went, Connacht and also went to war over a bull. You have <coughs> the Bucranium cults related to the god Apollo of ancient Rome. You have, it just goes on and on, the concept of the bull being sacred or the cow being sacred. Uh, the first goddess of Ireland, the Bo or Boan goddess, is what the River Boyne and the Bruna Boyne megalithic culture, Newgrange and all that, started with, the cow goddess, the sacred cow goddess of Ireland. You have it everywhere, the sacred bull. You have, and then the, which is when the apostate of that became the Abrahamic religions, who turned against the bull. So you had, this, what, what, who did, what did Moses punish the Israelites for? when he came down from and so the the bull the cow sacred to non-abrahamic people of um of the west you know we were our, 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 so much of us were built on that you know the concept of the bull is even used in wall street there's a big bronze bull down there the market is bullish you have even think even things like you know bullfighting in Iberia that's directly related to bull veneration i think i did a von on this years ago and so on and um, you have you know the bull is everywhere uh, as a symbol of the european and the cow the bovine veneration as a symbol of the indo-european existence so if you were as runoff Sioner said they would one day create a needlecraft or a you know to destroy the spirit well, they, and they said it would be the needlecraft. Well, it kind of was the first one when you think about it. What does the word V-A-C-I-A... I, I swear, when it, when it, the day when the internet is perfect, I often wonder if I'm being shut down. Cow puss. And they started injecting cow puss into people, saying it was curing all kinds of diseases. It was, it was a placebo effect. We don't know for sure. I mean, I don't know. And uh, but I'm not. I'm definitely. I definitely. <laughs> I definitely see that as a as a, a violation of the Indo-European bovine veneration that they took a puss from a cow, and instead and in, instead of having it as milk or you know that way, or eating it, they took the disease. You know something that's intrinsically related to the disease of cows or bovines. Uh, sickness pus is created to fight infection and put it into humans uh, you know it just seems when you look at it then you think of it that way it seems you know you kind of understand why you had all these Victorian cartoons of people growing horns and going moo after they had the vaccine